perfect addition to any shop. Time to start building. Today I'm going to build a standard wall panel that I've used when I produce my haunted house event. I start with four 2x4s. Three boards are nice and square, with one board that has a bevel on one side and one sheet of one quarter inch thick ACX plywood. I'll explain why one board has a bevel towards the end of the video. I make marks at 45 inches and 48 inches on two boards, which includes the board with the bevel. The two remaining boards get marked at 93 inches. When I'm done, the only waste material that I have are these four pieces that are each about three inches long. When I finish making panels and I've collected a bunch of them, I'll usually have myself a good barbecue cookout or a bonfire. Next, I need to treat all of the wood with a fire retardant. While following the instructions on the bottle, I spray the retardant onto all surfaces of the 2x4s while using the plywood underneath to catch as much overspray as possible. When I produced my haunted house events, I had to follow many safety standards. This includes regulations and inspections for safety and fire prevention. While the wood is drying, I'm going to mix up some paints with an additive that will make the latex paint a barrier against the spread of fire in addition to the retardant that was applied to the bare wood. I'm going to mix this gallon of paint with the correct amounts as detailed on the label on the bottle. I start by pouring 4 ounces of additive into this empty quart can. The reason for this is because the gallon of primer is full and I need to make room to include the additive into the gallon. Now that I have made room, I pour in 12 ounces of additive into my gallon for a total of 16 ounces between the two cans. After a trip to the hardware store for a proper mixing, I'm ready to start painting. All paints from here on have been mixed the same way with the fire retardant additive. Now that this side is dry, I make a mark on the upper right hand corner to indicate that this side has been treated. Next, I flip over the plywood and apply two coats of fire retardant. When I'm in production on several panels at one time, I would usually lay down additional sheets of plywood to catch any overspray so no fire retardant would go to waste. Now it's time to paint everything in primer. I give all boards one coat of primer on all six sides. For this panel, I'm painting the rough side of the ACX. For those who don't know, there is ACX and CDX plywood. The ACX has a smoother finish than the CDX, as well as the ACX is a bit more expensive. ACX plywood also has one side that is nicer and has less knots than the other. Sometimes when I make panels, the knots are preferred. However, since I don't know how the front of this panel will be decorated, I'm going to stick with using the nice side for the front. I paint the plywood with one coat of primer and one coat of flat black paint. I also make sure that all the edges of the plywood are thoroughly coated as well.
The first board that I place is the 48 inch board with the bevel. I place it with the bevel facing up and towards the other 2x4s. Next I check the boards for any curve and place them so that the curve will bulge out past the edge of the plywood. I found that it's easier to clamp the boards and push them into the correct size that matches the plywood instead of trying to pull them outwards towards the edge to line up. I use two nails and one screw to hold the boards together. Since these panels get moved around twice a year, the joints get quite a bit of stress put on them. The two nails are for strength and the screws to keep them from coming apart. I also pre-drill the hole to help prevent the ends of the boards from splitting. I line up all of the corners so that they're nice and flush. Before I glue this board in, I check to make sure that the measurement is correct. If everything looks good, I add the glue and assemble it with the nails and screws. This next board is the 45 inch board with the bevel. I check my measurement again, and it looks good. When placing the board back in, I make sure that the bevel is facing the correct way, meaning that it is facing up and towards what will eventually be the top of the panel. Next, I flip the frame over. When I build a frame for a panel, I always place the board so that the side that gets the plywood is facing down. I've found that it's easier to make all the 2x4s flush on one side by doing it this way. Now I apply a bead of glue to the entire frame. I asked Mrs. Squirrelland to come by and help me lift the plywood onto the frame. If I had tried to do this by myself, I probably would have smeared glue all over the plywood. I have her hold up the top end while I line up the plywood on my side and nail it down so that it is square to the frame. Ooh. Careful, Mrs. Squirrelland. Thank you for the assist, though. I can finish up from here. I mark the plywood at 1 foot, 32 inches, 4 foot, 64 inches, and 7 foot. This will let me know where the cross braces are, as well as where I will eventually drill the holes for the bolts that will assemble one panel to another. If I didn't mark where the bolt holes would be, I might accidentally put a nail in the same spot and end up ruining my drill bit. I place the clamp where the 32 inch and 64 inch high cross braces are. Doing this aligns the plywood with the frame on the sides, as well as I can use the clamp as a guide for nailing the plywood to the center cross braces. I'll go over what the center screw is for at the end of the video. I'm going to stand up the panel while the glue dries so I don't get any weird glue drips. Now that the glue is dry, I use my orbital sander and a dull sanding pad to clean up any glue that is sticking out on the sides of the panel. The dull sanding pad limits the amount of paint that might get removed and mostly removes any excess foamy glue. Next I paint all of the 2x4s with a coat of flat black paint.
Now that the flat black paint is dry, I do two coats of semi-gloss black. We initially made all of our panels with flat paint on the backs, but unfortunately, we had issues with mildew growing on them when they were in storage for nine months of the year. We recoated the backs of all of our panels with semi-gloss paint. Ever since then, we haven't had any more problems with mildew growing on them when in storage. The last step to finishing this basic wall panel is to drill holes in it. Using a 7 16 inch drill bit, I drill holes at 1 foot, 4 foot, and 7 foot. When measuring for the holes, I always measure from the bottom of the panel up, as well as I measure 1 and 3 quarter inches from the back of the panel. This ensures that from one panel to the next, the holes will line up and assembly will be a breeze. And there it is! One fully built haunted house wall panel ready for decorating, however I need it to be decorated. When I was producing my haunt event, I ended up making over 300 of these things. During setup, I would have different crews assembling the haunts. Due to the size of the event that I was producing, I didn't have time to hang around and babysit my workers while they assembled the wall panels. To help them assemble the walls correctly, I built some visual cues into the panels to indicate what is up and down. This is what the beveled piece of wood is for from earlier. If the bevel isn't facing up, that means that the panel is upside down. The screw in the middle of the panel from earlier is the visual indicator from the front. All someone has to do is find the end with the middle screw, and that means that that end is the top. If the panel is decorated and the screw gets covered up, I usually build some kind of other visual cue into the decoration on the front to indicate what is up or down. Now I'm going to show in real time how quickly someone can assemble and disassemble two panels. The bolts that I am using are 3 eighths of an inch bolts by 4 inches long, with two washers and a Loctite nut. My drill has a 9 16 inch long socket on it, and I am using a standard 9 16 inch wrench. The holes were drilled slightly oversized so that the bolts would easily fit. When assembling, I always start by placing the center bolt first. Doing this allows me the most control over the positioning of the panels. Once I have the nut on the center bolt, I always move down to the bottom bolt next. The bottom bolt is always second because if I did the top bolt second and the bottom one last, I would have trouble lining up the bottom bolt holes since there is nothing to grab onto. The top bolt is last because if the boards are curved and don't line up, I can always grab or clamp the tops of the panels and pull them together. The bottom is more difficult because there is nothing to grab onto to pull them together. Also, I never take my eyes or at least my hands off of a panel that I'm working on. A falling panel can be very dangerous. Don't ask me how I know that. I always use the drill on the side with the nut. This way, the stress on the drill motor is only having to turn the nut as opposed to having to turn the bolt against the added friction from the 2x4s. Less than 2 minutes. In an 8 hour workday, a small crew of 2 to 3 people can assemble dozens of panels in one go. Normally, I use a rubber mallet to remove the bolts, but I couldn't find one in time to record this segment of the video, so this block of wood will have to do for now. I use a rubber mallet on the bolts because when we use metal hammers, the hammers would damage the threads and make the bolts unusable. Once the bolts are removed, I put the two washers and the nut back on the bolt so that next year I don't have to track down the individual components, which means that next year I can just shove my hand into a toolbox full of bolts and it's likely that I'll grab a handful of everything that I need.
Also, putting the nut on the bolt tells me right away whether or not the threads were damaged, and I don't have to deal with damaged bolts next year during setup. I hope that this better shows how I made the panel in whatever video that this was linked to. Thanks for watching.